Andre, it's a pleasure to speak to you. Yeah, hi, Josh. Pleasure for my side as well. We're thrilled to see you airborne again. It must be a relief for you as well to have taken off from St. Louis. Yes, and uh, uh, you know the timing was very important. We really wanted to be uh, next week in Washington, uh, so we were anxious to find the uh, proper weather window for that, and we couldn't find it uh, for one single day, so we decided to do it in uh, in two steps. So that's a bit first for the entire team. Uh, it's not so difficult for the pilot. I think it's more difficult for the for the for the for the rest of the team as they are engaged, you know, two days and two uh, two almost two nights in a row. So it's quite challenging, but a very good exercise because we'll do a lot of these. I think when we do the flight around the world. Absolutely, you've got the fun part of the job from up in the air, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But I think there are many, many, many jobs which are great. Uh, so every, everyone has his, has his uh, I think, position. Uh, but that's true. It's beautiful up here. And, uh, you know, when you're passionate, uh, you're passionate about flying uh, each time that you have the chance to be in the air, especially a day like today, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a gift. Huh? Absolutely. So I work with Schindler Elevator, one of your main partners, as you know, uh, and we're so excited to be a yes. part of the voyage. Um, our, our employees and customers across the country are so impressed and proud to be a part of it. Um, we had one employee drive 14 hours round trip to come visit you in St. Louis. So you've been quite an inspiration to us all, and thanks again for taking the time to speak with us. Oh, for, I mean, for us, it's uh, it, 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 it's it's so it's such I mean, so so much a pleasure to meet. Uh, I mean, to meet everyone who comes to to see the airplane, but especially from our partners because you know our partners is uh, it's a it's big family. Uh, we have worked many years together uh, in a, in a, in, a, in with such a team spirit to be able to uh, to get where we are. Uh, so that's uh, for me. That's the, the human part of it is uh, is, uh, is is very special, and uh, especially with Schindler, it's interesting because you know it's 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 a business which is very different from uh, from uh, from aviation. But at the end, uh, you are moving people up and down uh, a lot. I mean, uh, and we move maybe only one pilot at a time for the time being. Uh, so there are some similarities, but I think we share the same values, we share the same goals. Uh, you are uh, extremely uh, uh, interested in working hard also to make you, your products uh, very energy efficient, and that's exactly what we had to do for this, uh, for this airplane. So, uh, no, I mean, whoever comes, please make sure that so we know it in advance, we can be there, and we can see, uh, we can see each other, because that's, uh, that's a true pleasure. Absolutely. All our employees and, and customers have been thrilled who've been able to see the plane so far, and we look forward to it again in Washington and New York. So uh, our, we asked a few um, of our employees and fans on social media for some questions, and we'd like to ask you a few of them. Are you game? Yes, please. Go ahead. All right. So our first question comes from Kathy Ruckey, uh, Schindler uh, employee in Morristown, New Jersey, uh, and Kathy wants to know which flight has been the most difficult so far and why. Okay, so uh, ple pleasure to, to uh, talk to you on the sat phone, uh, Kathy. I, I, I don't know if you uh, listen currently, but if you do, um, uh, really hello to hello to you. Uh, for me, the, there was one interesting flight. Uh, during the, the flight across America, which is uh, the, the, the flight we did to, to Dallas, because the wind uh, above the, air, the airport, uh, the wind during the, uh, the entire approach that we have to do to bring this airplane for landing, the wind speed was the same intensity as the maximum speed of the airplane. Uh, so there was no way we could fly uh, fly an approach like you fly with a traditional airplane. Um, so the, the 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 only way to make it was to keep the uh, the head the head the 
head of the airplane towards the wind and uh, by translation bring the airplane slowly close to the runway and going down to be uh, at the beginning of the of the runway at the right attitude so it was it was ex extremely interesting because it was completely new for me uh, so uh, it, it was quite emotional uh, very very strong emotion for me but also for the entire team i don't know if you saw the uh, uh, the clip or so um, so it was really extremely intense, new. That was again exploration in in uh, in, in the proper sense of the uh, of the uh, of the word. To try to discover a new way to do things and a new way to fly this airplane to bring it safe safe on the ground. Well, we know you've had your challenges, but you've had so much success so far too. Um, so our our next question comes from uh, Bal Pass, who's actually had a two question uh, for you. First, how does the solar-powered plane fly at night, and how does it fly on cloudy or sunless days? Well, that was the uh, that was the challenge uh, to make it fly through the night. Uh, uh, of course, you know, using only solar power was uh, was the main difficulty. Uh, so the way we do it, of course, is to store energy, and we store it in two different ways: in attitude and in batteries, so we climb during the day and uh, uh, at uh, sunset we slide to fly down and when we fly down we don't use the energy from the batteries, so during four or five hours we have uh, free energy uh, that we uh, stored in altitude and then uh, when reaching a low altitude we use the energy into the batteries. But to make it feasible what was important was to build an airplane with, which would um, use very little energy to fly. Uh, so we had to reduce the energy consumption in the same way as you do it by Schindler, where you try to reduce the energy consumption of escalators and of uh, lifts. Um, uh, we, do, we, did, and we, did, we did it together also because we had the engineers of Schindler embedded in our team in, uh, in Dubinov in Switzerland. Uh, so the goal was to reduce the energy consumption in, uh, in, uh, of the airplane in a drastic way to make it feasible. And, and I think that's, you know, that's, that's really the important message also that we'd like to say is that the technology that was developed uh, by all our partners, including Schindler, uh, all our partners are technologies which are going to be used, like you will use uh, these technologies in the lifts and the escalators. They can be used in, uh, in the application on the ground. So I think the, 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 the uh, you know, the, uh, the simple answer for that, uh, for this question, to be able to fly through the night with a solar-powered airplane, we had to save energy and reduce the energy consumption of the aircraft. It's an incredible plane, having seen it up close and personal. It's so impressive. Um, so we'll stick to the technical realm for our next question, which comes all the way from uh, Saudi Arabia. We had a fan on Facebook named Sayan Kumar who uh, wanted to know about the conversion of energy from the solar panels and how the energy makes its way from the panels into the batteries and then to the propellers to actually allow you to fly. Uh, so we we, uh, we use um, uh, so-called photovoltaic cells. Uh, so it's a thin uh, silicium silicon plate, very thin, like a semiconductor. And um, uh, its characteristics is that when it gets a sun ray, uh, it it free it makes an electron free, which we can collect and and creates therefore a current. So we transform we transform sun rays into electricity and then we use this electricity in different ways. One uh, to um, uh, in the electric motors to propel uh, the aircraft. And we have electric motors and propellers and that's the way we fly. And then part of the electricity will go into batteries for the flight through the night. Uh, and then uh, they will, uh, this electricity stored in batteries will be used in the same way uh, through the electric motors for the flight through, uh, through the night. Uh, so it's, the key to it was to transform sun rays into electricity. Amazing. So uh, just two more submissions. Um, our next question is from Steve Overholzer, a Schindler employee from Toledo, Ohio, not far from where you're headed in Cincinnati. And 
Steve asks, while you're piloting the plane, I'm interested in knowing what you're hearing. Since there are no engines, how loud or quiet is it up there? Uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, Steve, it's quite, uh, uh, quite quiet. If I can put it, uh, put it this way, because the engine makes a very little noise. The propeller, not much neither, because they turn uh, with a very low RPM. Huh? Currently, the RPM of the propellers is about 300 per minute, so it's even, uh, it's even a lower RPM than uh, uh, the uh, the blades of a helicopter. Uh, so that's true. The the noise level is uh, is uh, is very very small. I can hear sometimes airplane before I can see them. Um, so the connections with the outside world also is much more intense than uh, than with a traditional airplane. So that's another advantage of these technologies. Huh? I would imagine it's quite serene up there. All right, so our final question comes from another Schindler employee, this one, um, Terry Brown from Pittsburgh, uh, who asked um, a great one to actually leave the audience with because of Schindler's relationship with Solar Impulse and the, the launch of Schindler's solar elevator. Uh, how far off are commercial applications of the technology that you're using today in, in the Solar Impulse airplane? So if we, if we talk about the airplane uh, and airplane using renewable energy, being solar or something else, uh, we are at the beginning. Uh, we are, we are uh, like in 1915, like, like 1920, with traditional aviations, we are pioneers could fly across the country, but not over the ocean yet. Uh, we hope to be able to fly over the ocean in two years, so to be around 1927, where Charles Lindbergh did his uh, Atlantic uh, crossing. Uh, but it will take many, many, many years, in fact, to develop more technologies to be able to fly uh, passengers long distance with renewable energy. Uh, so that's, that's the beginning, that's the first step. But what we also say with this airplane is that the technologies that we have in this airplane can be used on many applications on the ground. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the electric motors can be used where, where we need electric motors. They are highly efficient. Uh, we have 94% efficiency, including the gearbox. Uh, the insulation materials can be used in uh, in, uh, in home building, can be used in cars. I think they are. They start they start to be. Uh, so these technologies have an immediate immediate uh, um, applications uh, potential. Uh, so that's that, that's a very important part of the message that we like to convey. Um, is you know. To show that if we can do this in an airplane, we can certainly do and uh, implement these uh, technologies and do these energy savings on the ground uh, as well. Absolutely. Something we agree with as well. So thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. I hope we were able to break up your trip a little bit and entertain you for a while, have some fun. Um, but we wish you the best of luck on your way to Cincinnati and on to Washington, D.C. and New York, and we look forward to seeing you along the way. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's always great talking to you. Looking forward to see as many uh, of your colleagues from, uh, from Schindler, from different states, in Washington, in New York. So wish you all the best, and uh, really truly happy to have you as, uh, as part of that's a, that's a great spirit. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Take care, Andre.